Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at how to debug your Rust code inside Visual Studio Code like a pro. So first of all, we need a project. Go to File Explorer, copy the location where you want your project to be, and then open a new terminal. So click on new terminal. Okay, now we have a terminal. Go into your working directory by typing cd and then the directory you want your project to be in. For me, it's this working directory and then type cargo new and the name of your project. In my case, it will be example. You can also apply these steps to an existing project, but it's easier to start out with a new one. Then I'll open my project like this. Okay, great. So here we have our project with a single file. Let's say, we have a small demo program which sums some numbers together. So mutable variable result, for loop going from 0 to 5, and then adding the result of i squared to the result variable. Then we want to print this to make sure everything works correctly. Now, if we run this, we should see everything works as we expect. But let's say things are not working. Uh, for example, we forgot to square i. So right now you would not get the behavior we're expecting, only 10 and we're expecting 30. Of course, this is a very simple example, but bear with me. This is meant for more complex problems. In Visual Studio Code, you have run and debug. This is the tool you most likely want to use when debugging your Rust project. But it won't work in the current state. We need a launch.json file. So let's create one. Create a new directory. Call it .vscode inside the root directory of your project. Add a new file called launch.json. So inside this file is where we need to put our configurations to make this panel work. I already prepared something. So let me copy it over. And here we go. So now we have our debug configuration. Let me walk you through how you can do the same. So start with this opening brackets and then version. So the version at the time being is 0.2.0. Then for your configurations, it's an array. And for now, there's only one configuration in it. You can give it a name. Any name will do. For now, I just named it debug. Then for the type, I personally use C++ Visual Studio Debug. There are a few more, I think three or four in total, but this one works fine for me. Then we want to launch our application in debugging mode and then where our application is. So this will probably be different for you if you named your project differently. It will always be inside your workspace folder. This is a wildcard, then target where it builds to debug for the debug configuration and then the name of your project.exe so here you can see it this folder won't yet show up if you haven't run it but if you just run it once as you can see so let's do terminal you can just type cargo build or cargo run and then we'll get this folder okay then for the working directory for this project it doesn't matter but you probably want to set it for more complicated projects it's just the workspace folder and then the pre-launch task which i'll get to in a minute so at the moment we can place a breakpoint and then we can press run now the breakpoint won't be triggered and we cannot inspect what's happening under the hood that's because we need to use the debug panel so because our, we created our configuration we can now press start debugging and it will run like normally but now with the debugger in place from visual studio code so it will break on the breakpoint in here we can view our variables so i0 the iterator goes from 0 to 5 currently at 1 and result is still 0 then here we have our call stack and in the watch we can manually type in variables and see their name so maybe something is not here then we can type it ourselves so we can also do i and you again see the value 
So the call stack is used to see which functions came before this point to get here. So let's say we created another function called print and we printed something in here and we put a breakpoint down here and we were to call this function from here. You would first see main and then you would see print because we first ran main and then we ran print. So you might wonder what are these functions? These are all external. These came from the operating system before main was called. So you shouldn't worry about those. Okay, that's cool, but there's a slight problem. If we change the source code, so let's go from zero to 10 and we debug it again, everything works except if you look closely, the iterator now still goes from zero to five, even though we changed it to go to zero to 10. So how do we fix this? Well, the easy solution, but not very long-term appropriate, would be to manually build it because it hasn't been recompiled. So if we now type cargo build, let's remove this. If we type cargo build, we're good to go and we can run it using the debugger. So as you can see, now it's updated. Well, nice, tutorial over, right? Well, not entirely because maybe we want to automate this process. If you want, you can add a pre-launch task. What this does, it runs a custom command line function. In our case, we want to call cargo build and it's ran before actually executing the, the program, the executable. So if we go into our VS code folder, we can add another file called tasks.json. And in here, as you can see, we call cargo build, but this is the name of the task. This doesn't directly call that command in a command line, unfortunately. So what we need to do, we need to create a new task in tasks.json. This little snippet. So again, the same as launch.json, you have some opening brackets, you have your version, and then you have your tasks. In here, I created two tasks, one called cargo build, which depends on cargo build example. The depends on basically means all these tasks are being ran from top to bottom. So if you have multiple projects and project A should be built first before project B should have been built, you can add your project A task here and then define it here. So you can add as many as you want. Then we do cargo build example and here I define it. You can give these any name you want. And then in here is the actual cargo build command. So type cargo, command build, the arguments for now we don't have any arguments and then these are the current working directory and the problem manager is rust c okay so let's try this again let's change the program now from 0 to 15 and let's run it using the profiler as you can see it automatically rebuilt everything which is very nice because right now we have the ability to debug and we don't have to manually rebuild it every time so the iterator now goes from 0 to 15 as it should okay cool if you want to add more configurations you can do so by just creating a new one so for the sake of completeness let's add a second one called release it will go into the release folder we'll call the pre-launch task cargo build release and then to also make it build before we run it. Create a new task, cargo build release. Depends on the cargo build example release. And we can copy this again. Cargo build example release. Now the only difference, of course, is the argument. Now we want to build it with the release argument. And that's it. So as you might wonder, in release, the breakpoint probably won't trigger, right? Yeah, that's true, because it gets optimized away in release. The compiler is allowed to optimize things. So as you can see, we built it and we ran it, but it didn't stop at the breakpoint. What if we do want to stop it at the breakpoint? What you can do is go into your cargo.toml and you can type profile.release. And under here, you can specify if it should have debug information. By default, debug will be set to false for release. 
you can also do the same for your debug config, which is dev config. And this one is by default true. These are the defaults. If you do want to stop your breakpoint in release mode, you can set it to true. You shouldn't release any project in this state because debug information can leak source code. Now, on the other hand, Rust is an open source ecosystem, so yeah, but um, just for your information. So now we set it to true and we can run it again using the debugger and you should see it stops. Unfortunately, some variables get optimized away. So it did break, but not on the same line and this variable got optimized away. If we make a small change, like maybe this, maybe now, who knows, it won't optimize away result. Let's see. Ah, it's still optimized away. Well, better luck next time. So in most cases, if you have a problem, you want to go inside debug and you want to debug it like that. Well, now we have a breakpoint and we can solve almost any issue. It's amazing. So we can run it. It will break at our designated line. And then we can step over the functionality. So now i is one, result is still zero. And result is one, now result is three. The result is 6, now i is 5, result is 10, and the next time I press this, it will exit the program because this breakpoint will no longer be triggered. Huh, I'm a bit, oh yeah, of course, we did <laughs> from 0 to 15. Okay, well, I need to press this a few more times. And there you go. So, that's debugging Rust inside Visual Studio Code using breakpoints for you. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye.